Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we are going to take up the MCQs based on today's newspaper of The Hindu and Indian Express, which are important from UPSC Prelims exam perspective. The topics for today's discussion are listed on your screen. So let us start the discussion. The first question of today's discussion is based on this news article which has appeared in Indian Express on page number 13. It basically talks about the green hydrogen challenge which India has accepted to decarbonize its energy sector including the transportation and industry. As many of you must be aware that Prime Minister of India on 75th Independence Day has announced the National Green Hydrogen Mission to make India a hub of green hydrogen. We have picked up this theme because in past UPSC has asked few questions on scientific interventions which will help in reducing the effect of climate change. As you can see in the year 2019, UPSC has asked about hydrogen enriched CNG. In this question, you are being given four statements and you need to identify which of the following is or are correct. You can pause this video and try your hand on this. The practice question which we have designed says that with reference to hydrogen, consider the following statements. The first statement says, Green hydrogen is the one produced with no harmful greenhouse gas emissions. It is a correct statement as green hydrogen is made by using clean electricity from the surplus renewable energy sources such as wind or solar power. And with the help of electrochemical reaction, the water is split into its two components, hydrogen and oxygen, emitting zero carbon dioxide in the process. So, this statement is correct. The second statement says, grey hydrogen is created from natural gas or methane using steam methane reformation but without capturing the greenhouse gases made in the process. It is again a correct statement as grey hydrogen is the most common form of hydrogen and it is created from the fossil fuels which includes natural gas or methane and in the process it releases large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So this statement is correct. The third statement says blue hydrogen is created from water using the electrolysis process. Now this statement is incorrect. If you are following the newspapers regularly, you must be aware that it is the green hydrogen which is being made from water by using the electrolysis process. And in this, the electrolyzers passes the electric current to split the water molecule into its base components which is hydrogen and oxygen. So, this statement is incorrect. And the process of making blue hydrogen is similar to the grey hydrogen but in this process, the carbon dioxide which is emitted is captured and stored to make it more environment friendly. So, this statement is incorrect. The fourth statement says, brown hydrogen uses coal in the hydrogen making process. It is a correct statement as brown hydrogen is produced by gasification where the coal is converted into gas and it produces large quantities of carbon emissions that are released into the atmosphere. So, it is one of the most environmentally damaging process and it increases the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which further results into climate change. Hence, this statement is correct. As you need to identify the correct statements, the answer to this question becomes C which is 1, 2 and 4 and the answer to the previous year question is B which is 2 and 3 only. In this question, if you do not have any idea about the hydrogen enriched CNG, still you can solve this question by using your common sense. The first statement says the main advantage of hydrogen CNG is the elimination of carbon dioxide emissions. Now the word elimination is very extreme word and it is difficult to eliminate the carbon monoxide emission. This statement is incorrect. The fourth statement says hydrogen CNG makes the fuel less expensive than CNG. It is again an incorrect statement. If we are using the hydrogen CNG, it will have more cost than the normal CNG. So by eliminating 1 and 4, you will reach the correct answer. Try to develop such kind of thought process while solving the MCQs. It will help you in cracking your prelims exam. Moving on to the next question which is based on this news which has appeared on page number 13 in The Hindu. This news article says that was SEBI pressurized to go easy on Adani Group, a question asked by Indian National Congress. As many of you must be aware that stock market of India has crashed after the allegations of Hindenburg Research Company on Adani Group and it has raised serious questions on the bodies which are regulating the stock market. UPSC has previously asked many questions on regulatory bodies. So this area becomes important for for our discussion. In the year 2019, UPSC has asked a question on Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board. In this question, you need to identify the correct statements. Try to solve this question. The practice MCQ says that with reference to the Securities and Exchange Board of India, consider the following statements. In this question, you need to identify which of the following statements are correct. The first statement says, 
it was established as a statutory body since its inception it is an incorrect statement sebi was constituted as non statutory body in 1988 and it was only in 1992 it was given the statutory status by bringing the sebi act 1992 so this statement becomes incorrect now if you eliminate the option 1 you will reach the correct answer which is b but we will discuss the other two statements for more clarity on sebi the second statement says appeals against the decisions of sebi as well as pfrda go before securities appellate tribunal it is a correct statement as the securities appellate tribunal is a statutory body established under the provisions of sebi act to hear and dispose the appeals against the orders passed by sebi and in the year 2014 this facility has been extended to the appeals against the order passed by pension fund regulatory and development authority of india so this statement is correct the third and last statement says basic function of sebi is to protect the interest of investors in securities and to promote the development of securities market it is a generic statement and is the basic function of sebi it is a correct one the answer to this question becomes b which is 2 and 3 only and the answer to the previous year question is also b which is 2 and 3 only as the petroleum and natural gas regulatory board is not the first regulatory body set up by government of india this was the only catch in this question if you were able to identify this you must have reached the correct answer the next question of today's discussion is based on this news article which has appeared on page number 8 in the hindu it basically talks about the rbi's decision on the policy rate which it has increased by 25 basis points to control inflation and bring the macro economic stability in the indian economy you must have an idea about the tools which rbi use to bring the price stability in the economy by considering this fact we have picked up this theme to make a practice mcq on rbi and its tools in the year 2022 upsc has asked that with reference to indian economy consider the following statements in this question you are being given three statements and you need to identify which of the following are correct you can pause this video and try to solve this question it is an easy question and i am giving you a hint that all the three statements are not correct now you can use your basic knowledge about the indian economy and solve this question the practice mcq says that with reference to indian economy consider the following statements the first statement says the reserve bank of india establishes flexible inflation targeting framework it is an incorrect statement as the flex flexible inflation targeting framework which is also known as FITF was introduced in India by amending the RBI Act of 1934 it was established by union government in 2016 hence this statement is incorrect the second statement says the operating framework of monetary policy aims at aligning the weighted average call rate with the policy repo rate it is a correct statement once the repo rate is announced RBI aimed at anchoring the operating target which is the weighted average call rate around the repo rate so this statement is correct the third statement says repo rate is the interest rate at which central bank absorb liquidity on the overnight basis it is an incorrect statement it is the reverse repo rate in which rbi absorbs the liquidity and in the repo rate rbi provides the overnight liquidity to the banks against the collateral of government and other approved security so this statement is incorrect and the answer to this question becomes b which is two only and the answer to the previous year question is also b because the first statement says if the inflation is too high rbi is likely to buy the government security now if you go by the basic knowledge if the inflation is too high then rbi try to reduce the money supply in the economy and how it will do that it will sell the government securities and suck the liquidity from market if you eliminate the option 1 you will reach the correct answer moving on to the next question which is based on this news article and it has appeared on the page number 11 in indian express this article talks about the cag report in which it is said that the government of kerala has failed to realize the revenue area of 7100 crores although the context of this news is not important from our upsc prelims exam perspective but cag is an important constitutional body which can be asked directly in the upsc prelims exam hence this area becomes important for our discussion as you can see in the year 2012 upsc has directly asked a question on cag in this question you are being given four statements and you need to identify which of the following statements is or are correct you can pause this video take your time and try to solve this question and on the similar lines we have designed one practice mcq on cag the first statement says controller and auditor general audits all receipts which are payable into consolidated fund of india and consolidated fund of each state 
but cannot audit the receipts of fund of union territories having legislative assembly. It is an incorrect statement as CAG can also audit the funds of union territories having legislative assembly and it includes Delhi and Puducherry. Further, the powers and duties of CAG have been provided under the Comptroller and Auditor General Act 1971. So, this statement becomes incorrect. The second statement says, the Comptroller and Auditor General can audit receipts and expenditure of bodies and authorities substantially financed from union or state revenues. It is a correct statement because CAC can audit the receipts and expenditure of bodies which are substantially financed by grants or loans from Consolidated Fund of India, of any state or of any union territory having legislative assembly. So this statement is correct and the answer to this question becomes B which is 2 only. And the answer to the previous year question is also B which is 2 only. In this question statement 3 says, information from CAG reports can be used by investigating agencies to press charges against those who have violated the law while managing public finances. It is an incorrect statement and the moment you eliminate option 3, you will reach the correct answer. Whenever such questions appear which has multiple options, do not get scared, just try to apply your common sense. Such questions have easy traps which can be identified and you will reach the correct answer. Moving on to the next question which is based on this news article which has appeared on the explained page of Indian Express. It talks about the ISRO's mini launch vehicle which is named as small satellite launch vehicle and it will place its second flight in a 450 km circular orbit around the Earth. As ISRO is an important organization which plays a major role in the space industry, this area becomes important for our discussion and UPSC has previously asked many questions on the ISRO mission and launch vehicles. In the year 2018, UPSC has asked about India's satellite launch vehicles. In this question, you are being given three statements and you need to identify which of the following is or are correct. On the similar lines, we have framed one practice MC which says that consider the following statements regarding small satellite launch vehicle. The first statement says SSLV has been designed to meet launch on demand requirements in a cost effective manner. It is a correct statement as SSLV caters to the emerging global small satellite launch services market and ISRO has taken up the development of SSLV with the help of its industry partner. So this statement is correct. The second statement says it is a three stage all liquid vehicle with up to 500 kg satellite mass into 500 km low earth orbit. It is an incorrect statement as SSLV is a three stage solid launch vehicle and not a liquid vehicle. So this statement becomes incorrect and the answer to this question becomes A which is one only. And the answer to the previous year question is also A. Statement 2 and 3 are incorrect. The statement second says satellites launched by PSLV appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky. It is an incorrect statement because it is the GSLV satellite vehicles which appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky. The third statement says GSLV Mark III is a four-stage launch vehicle. It is again incorrect because GSLV Mark III is a three-stage launch vehicle. So the answer to this question becomes A. The last question of today's discussion is based on this news item which has appeared on page number 5 in Indian Express. It basically talks about the Gaganyaan mission of ISRO which will take the Indian astronauts to the low earth orbit and this news says that ISRO and Indian Navy has started the trials for crew model recovery of Gaganyaan mission. As Gaganyaan mission is India's maiden manned space mission, this topic becomes important for our discussion and you must be aware about the key facts associated with Gaganyaan mission. And UPSC has previously asked many questions on the missions launched by ISRO. As you can see in the as you can see in the year 2016, UPSC has asked about the AstroSat mission which was launched by India and in this question you need to identify the correct statement. On the similar lines, we have designed one practice MCQ which says that with respect to Gaganyaan mission, consider the following statements. Now in this question, you are required to identify which of the following statements is or are incorrect. Whenever you solve the MCQs, be very careful whether it is asking for correct or incorrect options. The first statement says it will circle earth at low earth orbit. It is a correct statement as we have already discussed in the description that Gaganyaan mission will take the humans to low earth orbit at an altitude to 300 and 400 km and bring them back to the earth and also bring them back to the earth in a safe manner. So this statement is correct. The second statement says GSLV Mark II, the three stage heavy lift launch vehicle will be used to launch Gaganyaan mission. It is 
an incorrect statement as it is the GSLV Mark III which will be used to launch Gaganyaan mission. The third statement says, other than US and Russia, India would become the third nation to launch a human space flight mission. It is again an incorrect statement as China has also launched its human space flight mission before India. So India will become the fourth nation to launch such kind of mission. And you need to identify the incorrect statements. The answer to this question becomes C which is 2 and 3 only. And the answer to the previous year question is D as both the statements are incorrect. So that's all for today's discussion. Thank you for watching today's DPP. Stay tuned for upcoming sessions which will enhance your preparation for the prelims exam.